It's day two of my bikepacking trip through France, and it's time to level up this adventure a bit. I'm finally out of the worst part of the suburbs of Paris and get to encounter a varied set of roads and trails. Everything from gnarly single track to wonderfully designed bicycle highways. It's all part of the adventure, I guess. And the sights along the road are nothing to sneeze at either. Castles, picturesque towns and lovely bike paths along the Seine River makes up the scenery on this day. This seems to be a fantastic day here in France. Good morning and welcome to a fantastic day here in France. I've totally forgotten about the rant that I made last night and looking forward to new opportunities here in, on this second day. I think this should be a lot better. I'm hopefully out of the worst traffic south of Paris and I've been looking at the map and I think we have some, some great things to see today. We have a couple of castles coming up here and uh, yeah, just hoping for a really nice day out on the roads here in France. The sun is just coming over the mountain here and I've pretty much packed up everything. So let's hit the road. This is some lovely cycling here in the morning. Basically no cars at all, maybe a car passing me every five minutes or so. It kind of feels like I'm back home in Sweden again. And I found this lovely road along the river and there's a lot of trees shading me from the sun as well. So all the rants from yesterday are completely gone. And this seems to be a fantastic day here in France. Well, isn't this great? Look, here in France they even have a bike lane in the roundabouts. And the cars actually give you some leeway, so they are quite respectful to cyclists here. I've never felt like worried going into one of these roundabouts. Usually they, they take it pretty slow. Maybe in, in, maybe in Paris it was a bit crazy, but out here in the countryside people are generally a lot more considerate. And all of a sudden we've entered a single track section. <laughs> I guess my Kona Unit X would have been a better weapon of choice on this stretch here. And it's, on the map it seems like this is going to continue for maybe in the next 10 kilometers or so. So, <laughs> well, it's all part of the adventure, I guess. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 
Merci, c'est gentil. Yeah. <rire> So as you can probably see, the road quality here on the Les Scandebrick really varies a lot. <laughs> sometimes you go through single track sections and sometimes you have a wonderful road like this one that I'm on right now. Where they've pretty much taken half of the road and made a bike lane into it. So the cars have to drive really, but there aren't any cars actually. <laughs> But the few cars who are driving here have to take it very carefully and us cyclists are kings. <laughs> so I finally found a supermarket that's open so <laughs> I'm gonna go in and get some breakfast and I'm really really hungry. I haven't basically eaten anything substantial since I ate lunch yesterday at about 2 p.m. Just taking a little breakfast break here in a nice little park in the town of Moulin and look what I found when I was sitting there enjoying my breakfast they have here in the park they have this white box stocked with old used books so I'm guessing the plan is when you've read your old book you can just go down to the park leave it in the white box here and grab a new book Pretty smart thing here, France. So I've now made it to Samois sur Seine. It's considered one of the most picturesque small towns here in France. We're approaching the first chateau or castle on this bikepacking trip. Chateau Fontainebleau. And it's definitely one of the most impressive castles in all of France. So this is one of the places where you're not allowed to ride your bike, but you can walk it along here in the park. And it feels just as nice to take a stroll for a while and get off the saddle. So if you're lucky when you're bike touring in France, you might stumble upon one of these camping biovac or air, I think they're called. It's a, sort of a, a free campground with water that I'm gonna <laughs> fill up my water bottles now. I have only a couple of, of drops left in them. These are not that common, but if you find them, it's a perfect place to pitch your tent at the end of the evening. They're usually located by a trailhead or a hiking trail. 
I have to admit I'm, I'm quite beat right now. It's about 2 p.m. and we're approaching the warmest section of the day and I was so glad I found this cold water because I'm uh, I mean, desperate needs for some energy now. And I think I have about 10 kilometers left until the next major town. So I'm probably gonna find something to eat there because I um, feel like I'm in a dip. I need some, some energy in my body right now. Uh, I think I've done just over 50 kilometers and uh, the goal of today was to make about 115 and I have to admit, I think I was underestimating this journey here. I thought it was gonna be super flat. But it is super flat if you follow the, the Eurovelo and that is along the river. But I've made a few detours to go over to watch the castle and so on. And those times I find myself using Kamut and to get back on the track again. And usually that means having to go a bit off road. So I had to even make a bit of a hike and bike back there. So that really takes on your on your energy sources. So let's make it to the next town and refill our our energy. Oh, so nice to get into the shade again. Oh, I'm so beat right now, I hardly can't even speak to you. According to my Garmin, it's 35 degrees now, and I've just come into the shade here on the right side of the of the canal and I just found this this uh, sign of of the Eurovelo or La Skanderberg that's the route that I'm following in the morning we started I believe it's up up here and I followed the sand for a while and then sort of took a day tour towards Fontainebleau and I sort of zigzag my way down to the route again and I've now been following it for the last 30 kilometers or so and I'm in a town called Chateau Landon now and the new plan is to make it to a town or a city called Montagis and that is about 20 kilometers away from here and that will make it about 105 kilometers for the day and I think that is a pretty reachable goal uh, I'm quite I'm quite beat. I, I'm not really used to, to the heat like this. Where I live up in northern Sweden, if we have a couple of these days per summer, but I'm certainly not used to cycling in heat like this for, for many days to come. So I think I'm gonna take it a bit slower. I, I feel a bit of fatigue. <laughs> well, on to Montargis. The road quality along the river was very varied. Sometimes you rode through uneven sections of hard packed gravel like this one and five minutes later you encounter super smooth asphalt like this. We're approaching Montargis and I'm just gonna go through town here and uh, start making my way to the campground right away. I think it's about two kilometers away from the city center and it's up a little hill here, but my legs are fine. I feel a lot more refreshed now than I did when I spoke to you about an hour ago.
So I made it to the campground in Montargis and it looks like the reception is closed until 7 p.m. And I'm actually here quite early for being me. <laughs> it's only just before 6 p.m. now. So I, I interpreted it as you could go in and choose your own pitch and then go to the reception at 7. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to pitch my tent and... Maybe have a shower. <laughs> I'm in desperate need of one. Just take a look at my legs after a day out on the trails here in France. I need to go in back into town to find a supermarket and perhaps get a nice bottle of wine and some food. <laughs> and according to the price list over here, I think this is one of these camping municipal campgrounds that are run by the local municipality. So they're usually quite a bit cheaper than your ordinary kind of family oriented campground. According to the price list, I saw uh, the price for me, my bike and a tent plus electricity was about eight euro, which I'll take any day of the week. <laughs> and this is also what I meant when I said this is my type of campground when you get a nice picnic table like this it's basically invaluable when you're on a bike because you can like spread everything out in the morning when you when you're packing up inside of your bike bags and there's also an uh, electricity hookup right here and uh, some nice drinking water as well whoops <laughs> for those of you who haven't been Camping a lot in Europe and by Europe I mean like France, Germany, Spain and Italy and so on. You need to have one of these like adapters for the electricity hookup because this isn't your usual European socket. It's one made for RVs and caravans and so on. So you need to plug this in. And then you can put your cell phone or power bank or whatever you're charging in it. So I'm back from the supermarket now and as you can see I'm pretty happy that I didn't take the shower before I went there. I'm just as sweaty as I was when I arrived here. <laughs> When I go to the supermarket, both like for lunch and now in the evening, I bring along this one. This, since my, my backpacking bags are essentially full, so I need somewhere to store the stuff that I buy from the supermarket. So I have this collapsible backpack, as you can see here. When I collapse that down, it fits in the palm of my hands, basically. So. It's perfect when you need some extra carrying capacity for just a brief moment. So let's have a look what I got at the supermarket. So tonight's dinner consists of a big box of sushi and we have a glass of white wine to that. And I promise you, I'm not gonna have all of it. <laughs> I think half of this will do for me. Otherwise I won't be able to go at eight like I hoped I would tomorrow. And I also got some, some potato chips. I really feel like I need to get some salt in me. I keep chugging down water, but kind of drain all the salt out of the body. So this is usually the trick when I'm out on a bikepacking trip that I, not every night, but every other night or so I buy something salty either potato chips or some nuts or something just to get the salt balance back together. And for those of you who wonder why I'm not wild camping like I do when I'm home in Sweden or Norway, well those countries are Sweden and Norway and you have endless of possibilities to to pitch your tent anywhere. And plus here in France the campgrounds are much closer to each other than up in Sweden where you can go for basically a day without seeing one. And I've also come to the point in my life where I figure that eight euros is worth having a shower, 
having a picnic bench by your tent and having access to running water and electricity and so on. So for me it's not a tough choice. And I also think this improves the videos because I have like power right by here. I don't have to stress about finding power or bringing a solar panel or stuff like that. I rather just pay those few euros to, to have access to power throughout the day. And what I usually do is I bring two battery packs with me. So I'm usually charging one of them during the night and charging all of my gear inside of the tent with the other one. And believe me, it's a lot of things that needs to be charged during the night. And my Garmin batteries for both the GoPro and for this camera and my phone also needs a lot of batteries because I use it mainly to, to navigate throughout the day. So everything is like charging all throughout the night. So it looks like I got the family size of sushi, but that's the problem when you're going to the supermarket after been cycling for a whole day, you're so hungry you could basically eat a horse. <laughs> but it was either this one or a really small one, so I figured I, I would be able to eat most of this. One family box of sushi later, and I'm pretty full. <laughs> well, I've got a lot of new subscribers here in the last couple of weeks, or when you're seeing this, maybe a month ago, uh, thanks to uh, a very kind and wonderful person called Ryan Van Duser, who I did a, a short but sweet bikepacking trip with a couple of months ago. And for those of you who are new to the channel, you might have not seen all the trips that I've done earlier. And I've actually done a trip here to France a couple of years ago when I went to the Provence region. And you can watch that whole series. I think it's about 10 episodes or so by clicking the link up in the corner here. Otherwise, until next time, have a good one.